what is the best strategic bomber in Heart Surviving 4? Well, there kind of isn't one. It all depends on what you are playing the game. So why not show you from 1936 until 1945 the best strategic bomber you can build at that said period. Starting with 1936. And we're going to do this as the United States. The United States has a fantastic economy. And he's also very far away from everything. A pro tip, build airports in the UK. You want to do that. Trust me on that one. You want to build lots of airports in the UK. And also be aware that if you look under your focuses, you have the option here for strategic bombing, which reduces the cost of strategic bombers by 10%, which is mad OP. And you also have the option here for combined bomber offensive, and it uh, increases the range of strategic bombers by 10%. I believe that actually is a nerf. It used to be 50%, which, as you probably can imagine, was way, 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 way too high. So they had to nerf that. But regardless, it is still pretty good. Extra range for strategic bombers is big. How is that represented on the world map? Well, the easy thing to do is select one of your air wings and you can actually see the circle. There you go. So it's 1936. What kind of strategic bombers can you make? First of all, you can get the basic airframe. It's really important to know what you're actually getting when you build a more advanced airframe. And look at the difference here. The range is significant. You're also getting more agility. And another biggie is you're getting a massive improvement to air defense. Air defense is one of the key stats for your strategic bombers. At the end of the day, they're going to take an absolute beating in combat and agility isn't going to save you because what's going to save you is the unbelievably unpenetrable armor of a strategic bomber and you will also need the regular bomb as well but most nations you start the game with particularly the usa already has that anyway another one you could probably go for will also be basic range improvements which is also 1936 tech all right let's make our very first bomber you start off with a large bomb bay you upgrade to the most advanced engine that you've got you can either go for a four engine or a six engine it just affects overall the amount of weight to thrust ratio that you get for instance the biggest six engine you get 56 thrust Let's go with the initial one to begin with. And of course, don't forget to assign to Myos. We'll talk about Myos at the end of the video. The big balancing act with bombers is trying to get a good balance between the amount of bombing you can do, bombing damage, which is strategic bombing, which is this one, 15.7, and your ability to survive in the air. And it's all going to depend on how much air attack the enemy has. So for instance, if a plane engages this bomber and does 20 air attack, but you have 25 air attack, he will not be able to shoot it down instantly. It, this plane will be able to return back to base fully heal by gaining its defense back which is kind of like hp and go back into battle again and this plane will never be shot down because they'll never be able to enough damage to actually shoot down it but in real world there'll be less strategic bombers than there are fires and more than likely more fighters will be able to do enough air attack damage to shoot down your bomber with destroying their air defense for instance so in this case i think the best strategy is to build up your air defense but there's a problem. In 936, you don't have access to that technology. So you just want to make the most of what you actually already have. And in my case, you want to go for biggest possible bomb base you can get. And in this case, it will be three. And that is your 936 strategic bomber. As a just a quick comparison, if you were to make a fighter around this period, so basic airframe and pop on two light machine guns, the maximum amount of air attack you can do is 20. So you're not really far off from having enough air attack to actually shoot down this uh, bomber more than likely have significantly more of these fighters than you will have of those bombers there you go the b-17 flying fortress with a range of 1500 so we'll pop that boy down and you can see the range now is pretty juicy remember this is the minimum tier of strategic bomber you're going to need you can just just reach northwest germany and western germany but remember the range will not encompass this full area so you'll only get a percentage of air efficiency you'll not be able to project the entirety of your stats for this bomber and the stats you're going to be projecting of course is going to be strategic bombing now we actually do the real strategic bombing game the actual proper meta of strategic bombers and in this case we have now reached 1938 so we will have survivability studies we also will have access to cannons and machine guns, even though we won't be using them, but I will be researching them just to illustrate the amount of defense you're going to need. And now we're going to go for the proper strategic bomber. So you want to remove the bomb bay and then you want to add on. self sealing is what you want to go for first. Be aware this does increase the rubber cost for the aircraft, so just keep that in mind. However, it is the simplest and cheapest way of increasing the amount of defense on your aircraft with the big downside of rubber cost. And that's increasing your defense now up to 35. And then if we slap on an armor plate, we are now up to 43 and we are gonna have to remove a bomb bay as we should have done before and that's a lot closer than what we needed to be one thing i always like to do extra for a bomber is add a little bit of air attack on there and this guy we can go for one heavy machine gun defense what's the difference between one turret and two so two it just reduces max speed but the stats are the same and the cost is the same why are these the same but this one's got less speed 
Why would I ever go for that one? Anyway, Heavy Machine Gun Turret gives you a tiny little bit of air attack. And the reason why you do this is if you're making a mass of these, and you will later game, make a huge mass of thousands of bomb bombers, what I'll end up doing is you'll get engaged by fighters. But what you'll end up doing is you'll end up fight back against the, the fighters, therefore doing a little bit of damage to them, not a massive amount. And because you have so many numbers on your hand, you'll actually shoot down some of their fighters. Without a little bit of air attack, you will not be fighting back. So therefore, they'll keep the number of fighters in the air. You need that little bit of an edge to shoot down their fighters to eventually get that critical mass of bombers. So if you're not familiar with the term critical mass, it comes from all time real time strategies. It was really popular in the StarCraft scene. It's where you get a number of bombers in this case, bombers anyway, where it has a detrimental impact on the game overall. For instance, if you send 10 strategic bombers, the impact is very minimal, and more than likely they'll have enough fires to shoot down your 10 strategic bombers. The impact will be absolutely minimal. However, if you get 500 strategic bombers and start bombing, the amount of damage you'll do at that point is become critical, and it's very deal hard for the AI or a player to deal with that amount of damage that's in one set area. And just with a little bit of air attack and the amount of ability to fight back, in that case, it becomes even more difficult to control that critical mass of strategic bombers. The whole purpose of this video, I've got to say that the first bomber that I showed isn't really a bomber you're ever really going to use, because what's going to end up doing is the minute this bomber becomes available, you're going to convert all your old bombers to this model because at the end of the day you want that defense you need that air attack and bombing is kind of a secondary because you want to get that critical mass because you will find as the game progresses the enemy air force will diminish and their ability to fight back against you will be severely slimmer as well and when that happens we can start focusing more on damage is it time for damage under the circumstance in 1938 which you're not even at war as the united states but if you were let's say you were playing as the uk for instance uh, and you were winning the air war you could start thinking about upgrading the engine bigger remember this has an astronomical cost i know it's easy to think oh well i'll go for more thrust because that's easy but they look at the cost difference when it comes down to the engines and this is the reason why adding extra engines onto a plane is not something you always want to do because that's a detrimental cost on the cost of the aircraft to a massive degree i suppose if you were going to go all the way with that and go for the biggest and chunkiest engine you could do that and then go extra crazy when it comes down to extra extra bomb bays large bomb bay please and then you could think about removing some armor and then you've got the bombing potential here fyi you only really want to do this if you've reached critical mass will you be able to do that in 1938 more than likely nope one reoccurring theme you tend to find with aircraft is keeping the cost down but then being able to project as many stats as possible and that's how you get the most effective trading of aircraft so a lot of people say why make regular fires when you can make heavy fires because heavy fires are better stats that's true however the cost is higher than the stats you get from making it heavy fire. Does that make sense? So you will gain benefits from the heavy fire, such as the range, a little bit more air defense, but you were losing agility and potentially you, you could be losing our numbers because of the overall cost difference. So when you go for a one for one trade of the exact same production cost, you'll find that the regular fires come out on top compared to the heavy fires, unless it's some certain circumstances, if it's like two air battles that are quite far away from each other, as an example. So that is the reason why I seem to lean more so towards strategic bombers that tend to be cheaper than the ones that are more effective. It all depends on what stage of the game are you at. Are you at the point where you are competing for air superiority or are you dominating? If you're dominating air superiority, you want to go for bomb damage. If you're in a situation where you're still contesting, then you want to go for something that is more about survivability. It's 1940! Large airframe. All right, well, now we're making the proper designer bomber okay a bomber that is gonna be remembered throughout the ages remember this is a he heavier chassis now so it's heavier so you can't put as much stuff on it because uh, the plane itself the actual aircraft shell is heavier just it's nice to know because you might find that this aircraft has more stats because it can have more modules on it but this one can't because it's at the limit of weight to thrust and you think well won't the new plane be better not necessarily it's all depending on the weight to thrust ratio anyway We've got an engine three. We're going to go a four engine, engine three, which gives you a massive boost of thrust. Remember, thrust is the amount of stuff you can put on. And also, we're going to add on Boeing as the standard Mayo as well. We'll go into Boeing later on at the end of the video. Same applies. Are you in a situation where you are contesting air and you're trying to vie for air dominance? It happens. So in that case, you want self-sealing, focus on the defense, 
armor plates, 15.7 bombing, the best bombs we can get because they're the only bombs you can get. They never get better throughout the game. You can see now the air defense is 53. The improved airframe, the B-24 Liberator. And you can get an idea of the range. So that's a really impressive range. We don't really want to add in our range unless we're in a situation where we know we're winning. And then we can project them on stats when we move over to that set location. Remember, keep a mental note of this, of the range. So if you go over here, you get an idea. Once again, in this circumstance now, we're covering 99% of Northwest Germany. That's a really good, healthy area to bomb as well. The big what if with this is how much air defense you have. So... The most likely aircraft you're going to come up against as a strategic bomber is going to be a fighter. So I'll give an example, we're going to add on heavy machine gun one, heavy machine gun two. Now this is not a plane you would technically find in 1940. You'd probably get the one with the three modules, but you can see the air attack here is 36. So it's kind of air 36 versus 53. It's less than, so therefore it has some defense against it. However, it does become a little bit riskier. So in that circumstance, you probably want to add on extra armor. Then we're going to need the turret so you can project your stats. 53 64 and then finally the extra range to compensate for the extra armor you've got that you're losing because this is increasing it by 50 percent oh that's actually interesting range also reduces defense whoa i never knew that so what you're adding on here is getting removed by this whoa that's different for strategic bombers that is different that's why i wasn't aware of that so in summary what is this doing this is adding a chunky amount of air defense with the impact of trying to preserve this plane to combat and get critical mass to dominate more than likely the germans we're obviously playing against the ai here and we're also presuming that you are playing as uh the united states hence the reason why this is why united states themed strategic bomber but remember the big however is are you winning the air war is the air war still contested are you dominating in that circumstance you could get rid of the defense here then focus more on actual raw bombs and that's just passable but are you absolutely demolishing them in that case let's double up on the bombs and look at this 60 to 64 remember the consequences of losing this plane is massive because you're going to lose your critical mass however this is doing everything you want it's got some air attack it's got decent air defense and to top it off as well it is dropping some chunky bomb bombs 47.2 strategic bombing but we can take it a step further would you like to go for the quad bomb would you would you mind and now we're in a situation we're dropping chunky logs on germany the fattest of logs in that circumstance the amount of strategic bombing damage will be massive but be aware losing one of these at 167 production costs it's not something you really want to do just fyi you probably want to avoid this remember this is you've already won kind of plane remember you're no longer contesting them in the air you've won the air war for shits and for giggles let's present the idea that we're in 1944 and everything's been researched at this point. We might as well research jets as well, just for the for the giggles. Once again, at this point, strategic bombers fall off absolutely massively. They, they lose all point of even using them anymore. Because at this point, it's like you kind of want to move on to some CAS models because you want to be winning battles on the ground and you've probably already demolished their economy now. So the strategic bombers have lost all value. And there's no way of re-equipping them to, to something else. 70 production costs and once again we're gonna go for quad engine four bombs i'm gonna go with the presumption here you've kind of already won the game so the standard if you've got the rubber which you might not as america you might have to import it you probably will have to import it it's self-sealing and of course you want to maximize the range one will do but you might need two depending on where you are in europe and then of course mr bombay all the way and this guy's it off to be four at 71 to 75 and i suppose oh yeah of course we want to add a little bit of defense on as well a bit of air attack as well in this case this pushes us a little bit over so we will go for a single there you go 75 of 75 this baby just takes off just by an absolute whisker but once again this situation is you've won remember there's a situation you still could be contesting there and you know what's going to happen now so this is uh, things have gone wrong i've messed up it, i'm in a bad way now 
we're gonna have to focus on armor plates we might have to go a little bit heavier on turrets as well and of course we have to take off the bombs so this this bomber can actually take off and more than likely you want to focus on stats projecting stats than you do want to focus on the amount of bombing potential that you've got in a weird kind of way this plane has the capability of dominating the air indirectly with strategic bombing even though it's a bomber and it's technically not a fire but look at the amount of air attack it's got it's got okay agility for the size of the plane and look at that air defense no one is penetrating this this is a tank of the sky but of course this is a strategic bomber isn't the point of this to drop bombs yeah and his bombing is kind of rubbish remember you late game this is a weird scenario that you're trying to dominate air superiority with a heavy bomber why would you do that funsies i guess i love having fun in this game it's role play right there is actually one other build that would be viable. I don't know where it would be, but if you want to maximize agility, you want to go for the four engine. Because what jet engines do is they give you extra max speed and extra agility, which allows them to be a little bit more combative when in dogfights. But can you just close your eyes and imagine this? It's a fighter plane, a single engine fighter plane for Germany, dogfighting against a strategic bomber with six turrets can you just imagine the shots being fired out? i've got this like flashback of command and conquer generals can you remember that, that thing that plane you send in it like it plows the ground with cannons over and over again to a pole that's how i imagine it in my head of course this doesn't take off don't forget that so you would have to go for the bigger engines but this is really not cost effective anyway so why the hell would you even make this i don't know why would you even need agility on a max fire i would not recommend this i don't think jet engines are appropriate for strategic bombers if you really want to go ham and have everything on your plane you want to go for a six engine engine four and then go for this but you basically want a plane that does everything this is the ultimate air design this is eye-wateringly expensive but it does everything and do you know what i am so curious i want to see i want to see the range on this plane that's the biggest curious thing for me i want to see the b24 liberator this version the range on it this plane is so unbelievably expensive we've got 37 mils assigned to it with a well, of course there's some resource penalties but it's taking over like four or five weeks to build okay here we go the advanced fortress say only use this plane for this air wing and we get an idea of the range yeah you're never going to need a range any longer than this i have to scroll back really far to even see the circle and i've zoomed back so far i can't even see the plane anymore but look at the range on this let's just annex britain because that's something america would love to do right and then we send it over send this baby over to the uk then we can get a bit of an idea of range and there we go yeah where would you like to bomb in europe well technically i don't want to bomb in europe i actually want to bomb in north africa yes honorable mentions the military high command you do have the strategic bombing expert giving an extra five percent strategic bombing wow we might be also worthwhile to go for the pilot training genius he's a genius which increases the chance of an ace i don't think i've ever had a strategic bombing ace no i don't think i have no <laughs> do they even exist well i don't know maybe they don't maybe the game just glitched i don't know but you do gain extra aces for everything else so that is worthwhile to know also for the chief of the air force there's two good options here night operations is a biggie that can be paired up with one of the doctrines i'm going to show early so you have the ability to bomb at night and do lots of damage alternatively and probably the most important one to begin with just to avoid those stupid casualties is reduce chance of air accidents which are very very high particularly if you're losing a plane that has a production cost of 200 and of course you want to preserve that plane uh, for as much as possible so that one's a real biggie i'll go for this one first and then you move on to night operations if you're choosing to go down that doctrine path doctrines well you mentioned doctrines there's only one path for strategic bombers and it is strategic destruction and you don't really find any of these benefit you but then if you go down all the way to here we have the biggest and most difficult choice would you like to bomb more more bombs hitting the ground which is day bombing 30 percent bombing uh, bonus as well as an escort efficiency the idea is you're using heavy fires or regular fires i suppose uh to escort your bombers to therefore protect them give them more air defense uh when they're in a region which is really difficult to do because you're gonna give fires lots and lots of range but then in that circumstance if they've got lots of range they've got really bad stats because you've added just loads of fuel tanks onto them so i always think it's like i don't know you, you gain something but you lose something so overall they're gonna have better fighters than you anyway so in that case probably reducing the stats of your escorts probably isn't worthwhile so i don't know i like the fight that gives raw bombing damage but the escort thing is just kind of a, a throwaway 
unless you take somewhere in like i don't know norway or sweden or maybe take denmark out of them put airports in there and then you're going to be escorting your planes as well alternatively you can do night bombing which reduces the night bombing penalty by 50 percent plus if you stack it with this guy you reduce it by another 20 percent so your bombing potential at night was almost like bombing in the day and then an extra 20 percent compared to the 30 percent. so remember you are actually gaming more bombing potential for the day than you are at night however you're removing the penalty in the night as well if you think about it the actual raw damage of bombing potential is higher on this side because if you do bomb day and night and also take advantage of this, the amount of bombs you can drop is going to be incredibly high. And of course, this one's a biggie too. 25% bomber defense. Bomber defense is awesome. It's your ability to have a flying tank, so take advantage of it. And then at the very bottom, mass destruction. Last, but definitely not least, let's look at Air Force Doctrine. The most effective thing to build most air XP is to go for Branch Independent Spirit, which is this one here. This will give you ticking air XP, so you can build lots of air XP, so you can put into your Doctrines to feed it into the Doctrine you're going to be going for. And you want to go for this one as early as possible to get the maximum payback. Industrial Destruction. Doesn't sound like what you think it would do. It makes the cost for large planes drop by 75%, which is not even that high anyway, so I don't think you need to worry about that. Uh, but it also makes the research cost for heavy aircraft 5%. Uh, don't go for this, it's not very good. This is good if you want to save PP by uh, hiring all your high commands. It's one you go for, and then hire them, and then go back to branch independent spirit. I've actually heard good things about this one too. Industrial liaison for heavy research, 15% compared to 5%. I think that might be wrong. 5% is just too low. Why would you ever go for this one when you got this one? I don't know. And of course, the default is to return all the way back to air crews when you want to go for your doctrines. So it's kind of a matter of hiring this one to save PP, then switching to this one to stack air XP. And then when you want to go for your doctrines, you want the discount for doctrines, so you go for this one. It's the same for all air, really. And then the very final one, Spirit of the Air Force Command. You either want to go for centralized control, which is giving you additional range for air mission efficiency, which is useful because once again, it gives you more range. It's kind of good in the early days if you want to catch more of this Western Germany region if you're struggling with the range. But then finally, if you reach the point where you're not projecting stats anymore because you've got the range, you want to go for total devastation. God, I love the names of these ones. Total destruction, devastation, mass bombings, mass destruction. And this gives you an extra 10%. Bio! Myos! Heavy aircraft designer! Same again with most myos the left side is about production reliability as well as raw production of numbers where the right side is about raw stats i would personally would lean towards air defense as well as getting the production up this one gives you only for transport so be aware of this don't go for this if you're not going for transports and then air defense and reliability top it off more output five percent raw output is amazing alternatively if you're not looking for the numbers and you've already decided that you've won you can go for this one high quality aluminium alloys you've got an alternative route down the middle for range and agility one of these kind of long if you need it if you need it oh on the right side you're going to project what you want the most and watch is strategic bombing the center one and the left one for strategic bombing the right one is for uh, naval patrol bombers an air attack and then the right one for strategic bombing the choice between here is either do you want raw bombing power which is the right one or the left path where you want to go stack air defense extremely high with extra range and air defense once again, this is kind of, I feel like if you reach this area from going from this side and this side, then coming all the way down here, you've kind of already won. I suppose if you're the last minute and you're here and you're like, I'm not dominating the air anymore, you want to go to the left side, but this one is raw stats. So what's really interesting to see, there also increases the fuel usage as well, 5%, 5%, but you lose agility. But that massive 15% air defense and 10% air defense again, and top it off the 25% range, pretty juicy, I'll give you that. But once again, if you've won the air war, what's the point of more stats? Do you want strategic bombing? Strategic bombing is when you won and you want to actually drop bombs. And air defense and range is when you are still trying to find that critical mass. Have you found it yet? Do you know what it is? I don't know. Anyway, the policy you want to go for at level six is either going to be heavy gantry cranes, which gives you a production efficiency cap, which means you'll pump out more raw numbers. I'll admit, production efficiency cost minus 5% is very good for the strategic bombers because they're incredibly expensive. Remember, if you made the king of strategic bombers, the one with the 200 production cost, going for this one will reduce the production cost by 10 production points. That's actually pretty massive, you know, particularly if you're making such a massive fleet of them. And kind of a bit of an underdog is vertical integration. This is one of the generic ones that all the miles have got the option for. And this one is crucial because remember, this is reducing the resource cost for making these bombers. And the cost for these ones will go up astronomically. Remember, I've assigned 41 mils here. And the cost for this is 205 aluminium and 164 rubber. Those numbers are massive. So if I was to go for the policy of vertical integration, I can reduce the resource cost down for 10%, and that's going to save you a lot of resources. Hey, just some final thoughts after doing a quick test run. 
So, I completely forgot about radios. The beauty of radios is you can add additional strategic bombing by adding very little weight to the aircraft. And you get that research down this path by working your way down the radios and you unlock the module slots. So it gives you the ability to add on these three modules which all add strategic bombing, even though these normally do it at the top, but these ones will add strategic bombing, will add very small amounts of weight to the aircraft. In this case, two, one, and one. And in most cases, this aircraft's gonna be a big chunky boy. It's gonna have a lot of thrust. So the amount of weight you're gonna be adding is gonna be incredibly small. The big, however, is if you are contesting the air war and you've not won, you probably wanna be focusing on extra stats for defense or extra air attack. I have found that air attack is not that effective, but it's always worthwhile to have a little bit of air attack with some turrets. So in this case, you're probably going to focus on armors. Minimize the range, focus on the armors, keep it super defensive in the air. Then when you start to win the air war, then focus on more strategic bombing. And then overall, get that strategic bombing number as high as you can go. In this case, 111. Ow! So the core gameplay doesn't really change, other than the final bomber, when you've fully secured air superiority and you're bombing a lot like I am here, then in that circumstance, you can switch out the defense modules and the reins modules for radio ones, which are going to give you extra strategic bombing overall. When you find you're trying to gain air superiority, you kind of want to bunch them together in one region like this. The max amount of damage will be done, and they'll have the highest defensive advantage when fighting against fighters because of the massive amount of air defense that they've got. However, as the game progresses, you want to split these boys up and then distribute more bombing of more areas to hit more factories and then damage the enemies uh, or support further by doing additional bombings. Of course, if you're playing a multiplayer game, you're always going to be moving your bombers around to the most efficient area to avoid getting intercepted by fighters and interceptors. Be aware too, anti-air will slowly chew away at your aircraft. As you can see, losses are happening in Eastern Germany more than anywhere, even though there's no enemy aircraft. That's because there are some anti-air base here. So if you want to minimize losses, just bomb western and northwestern germany where there's no anti-air and the ai never builds anti-air so it's never going to be a problem and as you can see the losses here are minimum apart from a few accidents if it's reached the point where you're definitely women in that case you can start spreading them out even more of course bombing the core regions of germany in this scenario is the most effective because that's what damages the war support which inadvertently damages the stability as well which affects their ability to fight and the ability to produce the best equipment I don't know how I forgot about this, but this is massive. Air production reduces the cost of strategic bombers by 10%. That's huge. At the end of the day, that basically means now you can produce more planes, have more in the air, and reduce the cost significantly. Particularly if you're going from a bomber that has an unbelievably high cost. In this case, 145 production cost. Reducing it by 10% is saving you that 19.4 production cost per plane, which is just huge. Also, the AI will bug when they do Barbarossa. The game is hard-coded to move all the planes eastward in the event the Barbarossa begins. So you tend to find that you contested in the air when bombing them before that, but then Barbarossa starts and you find that there's no, no one contesting you. And in that case, if you're struggling to get air superiority, that's when you want to start bombing Germany after when Barbarossa begins. And the final no is you notice I'm not using the very best plane. And the reason for that is there's just no point. So when you upgrade your fighters, you're gaining extra module slots, which is really useful. But when you get past improved large airframe, you don't gain anything. You've already maxed out all the module slots on top and bottom, and all you're gaining is extra range and gaining extra air defense. That's all you're gaining from the chassis and increasing the cost of the aircraft and the weight of it. So overall, just keep improving the modules, upgrading them, and then upgrading from design. There's no point going above an improved large airframe. There really truly isn't. And of course, going for jets is just a waste of time because you want the maximum amount of weight to thrust ratio where jets don't provide that. And jets are only gonna give you agility, but big bombers don't have agility anyway. In this case, this agility on this aircraft is 1.1. It's basically nothing. It has a turning circle of the entirety of Europe. Strategic bombers! are insanely strong if you put the entirety of your economy onto them something that kind of is a bit boring to look at though because all you do is dropping bombs it's kind of an ARP, a larp thing i enjoy it. i think it's kind of fun looking at all the numbers and whatnot however when it comes down to a combat simulator for hoi 4 it is kind of a little bit weak so having a mixed economy with strategic bombers is a little bit more difficult i understand that hey make this bomber and tell me how you go guys suggest a country 
uh, type of plane and i'll make a video on it i'll see you guys next time give this video a click this one this one is